Hey guys, it's JMO again. Um, the other day, made a trip to Harbor Freight. My 15-year-old son said he was interested in uh, doing metal detecting this spring with uh, me. So I thought, you know, they have this little metal detector from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a lot like the ones you've seen from Radio Shack. Uh, so I thought for the price, and I had a coupon, it was a pretty good deal. They're about 45 bucks. Um, they have a cheaper one that doesn't discriminate, and it's like 40 bucks. So for another 5 bucks, you get the discrimination, which is totally worth it. And it has a uh, pinpoint. So I'm going to go through the basic functions of it. And uh wasn't able to find many reviews online about this little guy so I thought being that I've got a little bit more experience than the average guy who's gonna buy this uh, as his own detector I put up my own little review so first obviously you've got on off and that also is your volume um, it does have a headphone jack right there so you can run headphones in it two speaker mono but that doesn't really matter much um, sensitivity right here they tell you to run it at the middle but I found it does just fine all the way cranked up um, this switch over here you have in the middle is all metal mode discrimination and all the way down here is tone in all metal mode this, uh, sense of, this uh, discrimination dial is bypassed so it does nothing. Um, with it in discrimination, your discrimination dial um, has notches. The first single notch is for steel and iron. So if we have it on that first notch in discrimination, when you pass iron and steel across the coil, it does not make a noise at all. And then the double line mark right there is nickel. So when you have it there, anything back here, which is going to be hopefully pull tabs, bottle caps, um, garbage, aluminum, you know, can slaw, and steel and iron, will not get recognized and not make a noise. And then up in this range here, you have nickel, copper, zinc, and all the way up to silver. Um, if you put it in tone, okay, the dial still does the same thing, but instead of uh, not making a noise at all when it passes by iron, aluminum, and everything you want to discriminate out, it makes a different tone. It makes a broken tone versus a solid tone. I'll show you that in just a second. It's got a small LED light for uh, your low battery and this gauge here it's not super accurate it doesn't uh, do depth or target ID all that well but again it's an analog and uh, maybe with the sensitivity not cranked all the way up it might do better but let me set it up for an air test and uh, we'll run some coins across it and show you what this little puppy can do be right back Okay, so we've got our dial set. We've got a sensitivity all the way to 10. Discrimination all the way down. We're in all metal mode on the switch. And volume is about here, almost to the middle. And I know already that this plastic part that goes to the end here is 6 inches. And I don't have enough hands to hold the camera and the ruler and everything else. So, six inches, I've already done this, so six inches is where that plastic bit stops. So here we have a steel bolt with a nut and a washer. And we can... We get about...
Well, we get about about six inches on it. Not quite five inches with the bolt. Now we've got various coins to try. One of each common U.S. denomination. We'll start with the smallest, which is the dime, just a clad dime. Again, about five inches. A nickel, modern U.S. clad nickel. Same thing, about five inches. A penny. You get the point. It's all about the same. You get about maybe five inches, six inches in the dirt. Quarter gets a little bit better. Here's a half dollar. U.S. clad, 74, half dollar. right at six inches. So now with the discrimination, we turn that up just past steel, put it on discriminate, we go back with the bolt. Oops, we didn't discriminate it out. Get back with the bolt and discriminate at halfway. And nothing you dig, but you still get your clad. <clears throat> now, if we put it, what I was telling you about the tone, we put it down to tone, and we know we weren't getting the, the bolts, you hear that different tone. That tells you that what you're digging, or what your target is, is what you've discriminated out. So you might not want to dig it. Get a little bit better uh, depth with it, so to speak, in tone or discrimination for some reason, and I don't know why. So we've got a gold ring. Not quite. Turn it back here so we're near steel again and iron. And we try a, this is a 10 carat. And we accept it. And then, sort of a broken tone, mixed tone, broken tone on the steel. There it is. The nine function harbor freight hobbyist discriminating metal detector. I can hold down the pinpoint button. And it goes right to the center coil. Obviously in all metal mode. So even if we had this discriminated out in pinpoint, which is again all metal mode, here's a stainless steel, my wristwatch. We can get back here to seven inches on a bigger item. Eight, nine inches on the Wicked Digger. Fun for kids? Why not? It's cheap enough. Get the family out there detecting. You don't have to spend a ton of money. If they end up liking it, the hobby that is, then uh, you can invest a little bit more money if they're going to stick to it. If not, well, you got a spare detector or something one of your buddies can use. If you choose to hunt with friends and somebody's never tried it before, you got a spare detector, they can get into the hobby and then, you know, pass it along, so to speak. There it is. That's it. Thanks for watching.